Hello, today I'm going to show you how to get started with the Conan Package Manager for managing C and C++ library dependencies in your projects. This is the easiest way that I've found to use an arbitrary, almost arbitrary dependency uh, rather than downloading every single dependency individually, figuring out how to build it, and then linking it to your project. This is the uh, Conan website, so um, this is where you can come to try and get started with their documentation, but I just wanted to run through a quick example. So uh, the first thing we need to do is install it, um, which is very easy. S uh, so it's written in Python. Uh, so the first thing uh, we can do is create a Python virtual environment for the sole purpose of installing Conan. So I'm going to call my virtual environment Conan. And then I am going to uh, pip install Conan into that virtual environment. And these red warnings aren't too important. If we look in the bin folder of this virtual environment, we now have our installation. And just to get it somewhere central so that I can use it from anywhere, I'm going to um, make a soft link to somewhere that's on my path. So uh, because this is my personal uh, computer, I'll just put it heavy-handedly in the bin directory. So now we should be able to use it from anywhere. Um, so once you run it for the first time, it's going to create a con uh, cache. So uh, if you go to home slash uh, dot Conan, this is the folder that where it's going to store all of your installations and all your packages. If you want anything different than that, you can set this uh, environment variable, Conan user home, and set that to uh, wherever you want. But for me, this home directory is fine. The next step is to uh, set up a project um, uh, to use it. So. I'm going to do an example project with the Zlib C++ library. This is a library for compressing uh, streams of bytes. Uh, can either be a file or uh, just bytes in memory. This is an extremely, com uh, extremely common C++ dependency and you'll see it everywhere. Um, so in order to um, create this project. First, I'm going to come and get a, a simple example for Zlib. So from the website, we can go and find the uh, usage example, and it walks you through this uh, example and how it works. But for us, we just want the source code. So I've taken this and I've copy pasted it into our project, into this uh, zpipe.c. And um, this is C, not C++, but it, uh, the Conan uh, workflow works the same for both. Um, so we're including the zlib.h. Uh, and um, then it um, has all its code, and then it tells us how to use it at the bottom here. But we need to build this. Uh, so I've created a... Um, we need two files, at least. Uh, the first is a CMake list.txt file, which uh, we would need to build our C++ project anyway if we don't want to write the make file ourselves. Uh, so um, this is shown on the Conan website. Um, where did I have that?
So uh, here when it talks about uh, CMake generators, it has a minimal example. So in your CMake file, it tells you to um, include this uh, CMake file that's generated by Conan. And I'll show you that when we run our example and then call this macro Conan basic setup. And then uh, for whatever library that you want to use all of your Conan dependencies, you uh, just call target, target link libraries uh, like you normally would and then um, call it with this variable Conan libs. And this will um, link it to everything that you uh, have from your Conan file. Uh, so that's what we have in this CMake list.txt file. Um, I'm using uh, current binary dir instead CMake current binary dir instead of CMake binary dir for so that I can build it in a build folder. And um, so our uh, call Conan basic setup, and then uh, we have just one source file, zlib.c, z, zpipe.c, z, and then um, we're linking this executable uh, to our dependencies. So that's the CMake part of it. And then the other part of it is the Conan file.txt file. And this is similar to um, a requirements.txt file in, in Python. Uh, it, it's supposed to be an easy way for you to list out your dependencies. So uh, first at the bottom, we specify that our generator is CMake. Uh, so Conan will build a CMake file for us to include. There are other generators that could be used, but CMake is the most common one for C and C++. And then um, here we have, uh, we're specifying that we want Zlib uh, 1.2 Point twelve, and the way to figure out we want this is that um, we need to look in the remote for what this package is called. S uh, so if we go into uh, Conan uh, Conan Center, and uh, Zlib is very easy to find. It's a featured package, so we can just um, you know find it here, and then the package is called Zlib slash one point two point. 12, uh, sometimes it has other qualifications on it. There are two other versions of it that are available here. And uh, this is kind of like the PyPy of Conan. So you can even make your own recipes and upload packages to this yourself, uh, especially if you find a library that you want to use as a Conan dependency that doesn't have its own recipe. You could, you could even uh, write recipes for, for other projects. But let's say you want to use something off the shelf. Um, come here, search for it, and um, just include the package name. And if we... Uh, you can have other Conan servers, so if we um, look at the remotes, uh, Conan remote, uh, was it list? Uh, so this is actually the only remote that we have um, <clears throat> specified here, this Conan center.conan.io. So uh, if we put this uh, requirement, then it will search through all of the remotes for uh, any of our remotes that we have configured that have this package. And other remotes you could have is if you're running your own Conan server or if you have Conan packages in uh, uh, GitLab. GitLab has a package feature that you can upload uh, Conan packages to. Uh, those are other places that you might store packages. But for us, we're using something off the shelf. Uh, so this is all we need for a Conan file.txt. So um, these three files are what we need for our project. This message.txt is um, just uh, some test data. So then when we go to our uh, folder, we can call Conan install, and then I'm going to use this IF flag for install folder, and I'm going to have it uh, put the files it generates in a folder called build, 
and then we point it to our Conan file.txt, call that, and now it looked, um, it said, I, I couldn't find this package in our cache, so we couldn't find it in uh, the home slash dot Conan. So, uh, okay, we're gonna look for it online, and um, then it downloaded it, and then it put it in our Conan cache. So we can find the data in our Conan folder, Conan slash data, and then um, the the data will be in here. There's there's some more complicated directories here, but uh, the point is that it's it's all in there. So um, that generated some files in build. Uh, let me delete those, and if I try and um, if I rerun the command, then this time it'll say installing packages. It's already installed, so I don't have to do, I don't have to uh, download it and put in your cache again. So I'm just going to generate these files that you need for your project. So in the build f uh, folder, uh, we have some uh, files that were generated by Conan. The most important is this uh, Conan build info .cmake. This isn't really meant to be human readable um, because it has all sorts of um, stuff on it for um, different operating systems and um, just this isn't something that you really need to bother yourself with, but uh, just to know that this is where it's pointing to um, <clears throat> the library that's in the Conan cache. Uh, so now that that's in there, uh, if we want to build our project, then I can just come in here into build and then say CMake build and then my CMake file is in the top level directory. So that's why I use the current binary uh, dir. Um, so in the cmake list.txt file, um, we're including current binary dir, which is in this build folder, and then we're including this uh, Conan build info.cmake file that was generated by Conan. So now we create our make file and then build our project. And now uh, our executable is, is in a <coughs> build slash bin. So now if I go to the top level of the directory, just to show you that this works, um, the whole point of, of this uh, example script that Zlib has is that it compresses and decompresses a file. So I wrote a message with some redundancy. So Mary had a little lamb with a bunch of duplicate I's and A's. So the compression algorithm should be able to uh, compress this pretty easily. And so for this uh, folder file, we, we call this with, uh, let me see. Okay, we call it with uh, this command. So if we're compressing, we leave out the dash D flag and then we use um, sort of like pipe notation we want to read from message.txt, so then we'll do message compressed.bin. So now we've generated this uh, message compressed.bin, and it's not text anymore, um, but we can recover our original message by decompressing it. So let's. Um, run the command with the dash D flag, except this time we're going to read from message compressed up in, and then we're going to write out to message original dot text. So message orig should give us our original message. And just to show you that this, uh, program actually did something. If we count the number of bytes in original message.txt, it's 66, but in our compressed file, it was 
only 35. So Zlib was able to compress our message and then decompress it. And one more thing I want to show is that in your, uh, you can have profiles in Conan. Uh, so if you go to profiles, there'll be a default profile if you run it. Um, but you can create other profiles and uh, set things like, you know, in your env, you can set environment variables. So things like cc and cxx, which uh, set, which like get paths to your compilers. Those are <clears throat> useful things that you might want to customize for different profiles. Uh, so hopefully uh, you're able to uh, use this to be able to quickly uh, leverage um, some C++ libraries and uh, hope it's useful. Thank you.